Nearly every teenager has looked in the mirror in the morning, only to discover a huge zit staring back at them. Your skin is porous. It's filled with millions and millions of tiny little holes, or pores. In the skin, glands connected to these pores release a pale yellow oily substance that lubricates and protects the skin. This oily substance, called sebum, is one of the main causes of acne. Although it's essential to keep our skin soft and pliable and our hair shiny, too much of it can be a problem. Especially in teenagers, large levels of a sex hormone called testosterone are produced, which causes the skin to release a lot of sebum. Sometimes, this excess sebum can clog up the pores. Adding to the mix are dead skin cells. A total of about 30,000 skin cells are shed every hour. A lot of these skin cells are shed inside the pores themselves. A blocked skin pore also contains bacteria. They feed off dead skin cells and the clogged sebum within the pores, producing toxins that damage the lining of the pores. As these bacteria grow and multiply, they invade the area surrounding the pore, which can lead to a bacterial infection. A blocked pore initially turns red because blood rushes to the site, which is one of the ways our bodies respond to infections. Then, white blood cells, a type of blood cell responsible for fighting infection, destroy bacteria, build up below the surface of the skin, and eventually die. These dead white blood cells, along with dead skin cells and some bacteria, form a white liquid known as pus. A pimple forms when the excess oil and dead skin cells clog up and block the opening of the pore. This type of pimple is called a whitehead. Another type of pimple, called a blackhead, appears when sebum and dead skin cells clog the pore but not the opening as in a whitehead. While the pore is clogged, its surface remains open. These pimples appear black because melanin in the dead skin cells reacts with oxygen from the air, which changes the melanin's color from brown to black. Washing your face with soap and water several times a day is a good way to minimize acne. That said, once acne has developed, no amount of washing will remove it. At that point, acne is due to the bacterial infection, and only antibacterial agents can treat it. Antibacterial substances destroy or prevent the growth of bacteria. They're available in the form of over-the-counter creams in pharmacies or are prescribed by dermatologists. A typical compound found in many of these drugs is benzoyl peroxide. This molecule has a very weak oxygen-oxygen bond, so when it reacts with the molecules and bacteria, it's broken down into benzoyl radicals. The presence of an unpaired electron makes the benzoyl radical very reactive. That's because in almost all molecules, electrons exist in pairs. To be stable, the radical needs to attract an electron that can pair up with its lone electron. This occurs when the radicals from the acne medications react with molecules like bacterial proteins and destroy them, killing the bacteria. Other reactions of the peroxide produce molecular oxygen. The bacteria present in acne pimples can only survive in the absence of oxygen. When oxygen is present, they die. So this is another way acne bacteria can be destroyed. Now that you know the science behind gross stuff like acne and bad breath, hopefully they won't seem so nasty anymore. After all, it all just boils down to chemistry.